Hello, and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. That's how I hold my controller in. Here's the problem with claw, okay? I'm gonna just be flat out. The debate around controller players using claw grip has raged on since competitive gaming first arrived. The strange thing is, it seems to bring out the worst in people. We take a side and force it upon other people. So I'm going to try and explain my approach, my experiences as a first generation player who once played claw. I'll also show you a few exercises to help condition your hands if you decide to dedicate yourself to claw, and I'll even show you some of the gross things my hands do now, thanks to amongst other things, 20 years of gaming. Disgusting! The only place to start is by showcasing why players use claw grip. It's ultra simple, it's about getting an advantage over other players. Basically by moving your index finger across the face buttons and using your middle finger to use the shoulder buttons, it suddenly becomes possible to do anything on a controller. Jumping and aiming is easy, crouching without moving your thumb is instinctive. Ultimately this is how a player must play to stay competitive, and in keyboard mouse lobbies it's almost imperative. The only alternative is spending money on a modded controller, like a scuff, or switching to mouse and keyboard. I was reading an article before putting this together, which people called Claw Grip the free scuff controller. Looking at a game like Fortnite, professional controller players have this same decision to make. Play Claw like Ghost Aiden, or buy a scuff controller like Nick Merckx. When I started gaming, controllers looked like this. Yeah, I'm old. I am so old. Then PlayStation released the analog controller, dubbed the DualShock, which added thumbsticks. More than 20 years later, this design is still the norm. It's still functionally the same. So I'm going to use my hands as a case study. When games began to utilize thumbsticks, I began to hold the controller like this. I remember it hurting like hell, but over time the pain went away. At the time I told myself it was simply my hands becoming used to a new controller setup. I now know, 20 years later, pain and discomfort are very different things, and my body was trying to tell me to stop. Let's try and visualise this. Hold up your controller and have someone take it away. Try to hold that pose. Your hands are simply not designed to be held in this way for long periods of time. Try that again with claw grip. Not only do you look like a dinosaur trying to give the middle finger, it's simply an uncomfortable position adding extra pressure to your index finger. Here is something you must do if you want to use claw over your gaming life or gaming career. In fact, it's for all of us. Take regular breaks. I know nobody takes that seriously, but it's unbelievably important to give your hands time to rest and recuperate. Playing six hours without moving is insane. And I still do it now, so I understand how difficult it is to stop. Taking breaks is damn hard to do, so here's another telltale sign you have to rest and have a night off every so often. If you've ever experienced involuntary movement in your fingers, also known as a twitch. When you hold your hand out and your fingers keep pressing the buttons without you even knowing. If this happens to you, it's time to rethink your gaming schedule. Acknowledge the signs. You may feel young and invincible, but wait 15 years and you'll wish you took care of your hands sooner. Have you heard of a condition called HAVES? I can't remember what it stands for, but it's basically what labourers suffer from. If they use something like a pneumatic drill, which I believe is called a jackhammer in the US, sorry if that's wrong, it can cause nerve damage, making their hands and arms numb, cold, and in some cases, unusable. I'm not saying this directly links to holding a controller, but I am trying to show you that doing something slightly uncomfortable for many years can and will lead to issues. Coincidentally, this is why I turned off the vibration function in many games. So, two years ago I went to the doctors to talk about arthritis, carpal tunnel and all the other scary things we are told that could happen to our hands. That's where I learned a plethora of exercises which would help gamers. Here's three exercises my doctor gave me to combat controller and keyboard and mouse issues. These exercises have helped me and are for all gamers, regardless of if you play claw, standard or mouse and keyboard. Right, bring your thumb into your hand as far as you can. You should feel a pull in your wrist or lower end of your thumb. If this hurts, loosen it up, but we do want to feel a little stretch. Next, we are going to fan our fingers from our pinky to our index. The doctor called this piano fingers. Do this for about 30 seconds of time. I began to do this in game lobbies whilst waiting for a game to begin. It doesn't need anything to be done. It's a quick stretch and it's certainly worth it. Next is the tennis stretch, also used for arthritis. Hold your arm out like you're telling someone to stop. Take your other hand and apply pressure for about 30 seconds. Do the same with your hand flexing the other direction, but remember to know the difference between a stretch, discomfort and pain. Only apply a little pressure. 
due to the way we hold a controller, a mouse, or even a mobile phone, it's possible that grip strength is impacted. In other words, you won't be able to open jars when you get older unless you start taking care of it now. If you take nothing else from this video, take this one. Grab a stress ball or something squishable and simply tighten your grip repeatedly for 30 seconds. Even try this, try grip it fast for 3 then slow for 2. It improves your circulation, reminds your hands to stay strong and best of all, it's a great way to de-stress after someone kills you in game. Damn stream snipers. Those three exercises were beneficial to me, so I thought I'd share them. I have so many more received straight from the doctors. So if you'd like me to put them in a video, give me a shout. I hear that some countries don't have free healthcare, so if I can save you a few dollars, rupees or euros and extend your gaming lifespan, give me a shout. So we've looked at why claw is great for a competitive edge, and we've looked at conditioning our hands for the good of our health. But what if you don't want to take the claw chance? Is the only other option a modded controller? For those that don't know, a modded controller usually adds paddles to the underside of the controller to allow buttons to be pressed by fingers which usually simply stabilise the controller. I recently reviewed a Scuff Impact and saw both benefits and drawbacks. I won't go into detail here, but the price was pretty high. For many of us, it's simply not possible to buy a controller in that price range. So, I've tried to find alternatives to a scuff with the cheapest, this strike pack which attaches to your standard controller and adds paddle functionality. It costs about the same as a AAA game rather than $200 plus on a fully kitted scuff. Other brands are also moving into the modded controller territory. Razer, Evil Controllers, Nacon, Astro. All these manufacturers should mean the marketplace of modded controllers drops in the coming years. Things should get cheaper. One day, regular consumers won't be forced to risk additional hand injuries to compete. Well, that's the dream anyway. Without a doubt in my mind, I believe a modded controller is the far safer option to protect your hands long term. It isn't ideal, but the positioning of your hands stays as neutral as possible. No additional pressure on your knuckle joints or incorrect motion of your index finger. So I guess from that, I'm on the side of not playing claw. Hmm. If you're interested in my story, I'll tell it now. I recently hit my 30s. It's depressing as hell. I found a grey hair last week. Anyway, I started to have problems with my hands. They felt numb on occasion. At worst, it felt like someone else was controlling my fingers, and I hit rock bottom when I lost feeling in two fingers over Christmas 2018, and I knew I needed to sort it. I saw a specialist and took my controller to show her the movements to hopefully find some correlation between the issues. So check this out, but don't watch this if you're eating because it's pretty gross. We found correlations to many weaknesses in my hand thanks to gaming, using a mobile phone and using a mouse and keyboard, especially the mouse and keyboard by the way, because I never had a wrist rest before this point. So I was crushing the nerves in my wrist without realizing I'm such an idiot. After giving up claw, I began to press the X button on the PS4 pad with my right thumb without taking it off the thumbstick, basically hyperextending my thumb thousands of times an hour. If I try to do that now, this happens! My thumb dislocates. It's lovely, isn't it? Next, 20 years of gripping a controller has assisted in ligament damage in my fingers. When a controller is removed from my grasp, this happens to my knuckles. Damn, that's gross. But without a doubt, the numbness or being unable to feel my fingers was the scariest thing to ever happen to me as a gamer. The moment I felt most crushed was when I was unable to open a bottle of milk. I had zero grip strength and I felt useless. Luckily, we live in a time of medical marvel and after a steroid injection into my wrist, which hurt like hell, everything improved and I decided to learn from that situation and make sure it doesn't happen again because the average person can only take that steroid injection six times before it causes harm. So I don't fancy using up those extra lives just yet. Three months later, I still have issues and expect to for the rest of my life. I've made peace with that, but I'm hoping this will help other people. Whether you choose to use claw grip or not, I don't know, but it's part of a bigger issue for gamers. Please take care of your body any way you can. Don't become me regretting your actions. Take regular breaks, strengthen and exercise your hands. Don't let your wrists bend too much when you're using a mobile phone. Force your school or workplace to invest in wrist rests when using a keyboard and mouse. You only get one shot at this life, no response, no continues. Something as simple as spending a little extra money on a modded controller may extend your gaming career for years. Let me know your thoughts. No company has sponsored this video. I'm not adding Amazon links to make money. This was simply my opinion on the claw debate, which is only a tiny portion of a bigger issue for gamers. I do hope it was useful. 
this video will likely bomb, so if you could help share it, that would be really appreciated. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. I'll see you next time.